I can't see myself. There I am. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name's Kelly Barber, and welcome to the 2011 Spates Coast to Coast uh, webinars. Uh, this is the first of six webinars that will be held between now and February. Um, tonight's session will be um, from Go to Woe of the Coast to Coast, uh, the Spates Coast to Coast, and um, this is in honour of the, uh, the, the 30th anniversary of the Spates Coast to Coast. So a little housekeeping first. Um, there's a chat room to the right of the uh, web page there in front of you. Uh, you can type in questions as uh, they occur to you. Uh, you're probably going to have to log in first. Uh, that might take a couple of minutes, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, shouldn't be too much trouble. Um, we'll endeavour to answer your questions at the end of the session. Uh, you might have some uh, during the session. Feel free to ask them, and uh, if we can, we'll get to them as best we can. Uh, before I forget, um, I have to ask one question for competitors of the 2011 uh, West Coaster, which is an off-road run in the North Island, uh, and I'll get to that a little later in the evening. Okay, so who am I? Well, my name's Kelly Barber. Um, the reason I'm here is I've, uh, I've done 12 Coast to Coast. Um, pretty keen uh, first timer like many of you, and uh, there's obviously a lot to learn. Um, I did a, a few two-day events and a couple of one days, nice and painful, and then I did a few teams events as well. Uh, I made just about every mistake you could make in the Coast to Coast from getting dehydrated to falling out of my kayak, to training too hard and, and uh, not enough. Uh, but eventually I got okay and, uh, and ended actually in my ninth Coast to Coast coming third in the, in the over 40s, uh, which was a bit of a thrill in the two-day event. And then a couple of years after that, I recruited a very quick brother of mine to, uh, uh, to do the running for me and we won the family teams. Got our names in the book, pretty, uh, pretty stoked with that. So uh, winning was pretty cool. Um, and um, I'm now going to introduce you to tonight's guest, who's uh, probably the, the winningest athlete in the history of the Coast to Coast. Um, everybody knows him. His name's Steve Gurney. He won nine one-day races, uh, seven of them in a row, and uh, pulled off second uh, at the age of 40, which is an outstanding feat. Uh, not only that, uh, Steve Gurney is innovated through many years of his experience in the coast to coast. He's written a book, uh, which is a fascinating read. In fact, I think I've even got a coffee here. I could probably even get it autographed because Steve's here with me now. Come on over. Hey okay, mate. How are you, mate? Good to see you. Hi, team. Hi, hey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, it's a real privilege to have you here today, Steve. Um, what have you been up to? I mean, you do a lot of things. You know, what can you tell us about what you've been up to? Oh, well, this year actually was quite an entertainment and entertaining thing. I, I did the race with Junkins, you know. Um, uh, he did the mountain. Well, I, I, I hesitated to call it the mountain run. It was more like <laughs> the mountain walk. And I did the uh, the kayak, and um, it was pretty fun. Yeah. It was nice and social. I love the, the, the two-day event, camping over Clonnut Corner, that sort of stuff. So it's, it's probably the best way to start the race is either as a support crew in the two-day race or as you know a team or individual in the, in the two-day race, which is really social. So that would have been quite a different experience for you as well, I suppose, you know, you know not competing, a lot less pressure. And yeah, now, yeah, so the, the one-day race is a very, it's kind of a lonely race, um, but that's it, cool if you're really focused on winning or achieving your goal or, you know, if you're really dedicated, the one-day race is the one for you. But if you're into social or just sort of getting a feel for what the race is involved uh, with before you actually go and give it a good nudge, well, the two-day race is for you. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, you also do uh, some some work with uh, beginning coast to coasters, you know, for the first time. Uh, you, do, you run courses and things yeah, like yeah, that, that's and right. you do motivational speaking as well. So Yeah, that, well, that's what I do now. I don't race anymore, I, yeah. except the human race, do that, do that one. But um, there's... Uh, I, I'm a conference speaker and a trainer. I do workshops, and one of those workshops I've been doing lately is yeah. a coast to coast one. I did one last weekend um, in Christchurch, and then I've got one uh, this coming Saturday in Auckland, um, and that's through Canoe and Kayak North Shore. So uh, that's an intense one day, nine hour yeah. um, session in the classroom and out in, in the urban environment. Yeah. Uh, how do you train for it? If you're in Auckland, how do you train for the coast to coast down here in the South Island? And I, so I show them those, the sorts of things you can do in parks and playgrounds and the, either the beaches yeah. that simulate all the skills you need for the coast to coast. Well, that, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a, it's a really good way to train is to, mm. is to use your local environment. And mm. I certainly did that, you know, uh, having. A number of children while I was uh, 
preparing for my race. That's a show, mate. Look there. That's all those pregnancies. Oh, well, I'm hey? still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, just to, to keep moving ahead. So we're just going to run through the race from uh, from woe to go. So the first thing you do is you're going to meet uh, over at Kamara Racecourse at 3 o'clock uh, for registration on the Thursday before the race. Uh, the Friday, first thing is when the two-day race starts and then the one-day race starts on Saturday. I assume that most of you will be doing uh, the two-day race, so you go to registration, you get your pack, uh, you know, you might get your ankle strapped and things like that, um, and then you go to the race uh, dinner that night at 5.30, there'll be another sitting at 7pm, and then there's the famous uh, Juddy uh, safety briefing. Safety briefing. Yeah. I must say, there's a really, really cool social part of the race, is, you know, you've been training for months and months, and you're kind of nervous. And you get them finally. It's not quite so stressful as you thought because there's all these other people that are exactly the same as you. Yeah. And a lot of people camp at the race course that night. Some people go off to the motels at Greymouth and Hokitika. Yeah. But the camping's a really cool thing. If you're just doing it socially, that's the place to go. Uh, you don't get too much, you know, a lot of sleep because people are tinkering and stuff. So <laughs> you might want earplugs. Um, but it's really cool just to compare yeah. notes and yeah. see what they're doing. Oh, you never thought that. And you can do some tinkering yourself and. You learn a lot at, at, yeah. at the registration. Yeah, the last three mm. coast to coast I've stayed at the race course, mm. and uh, yeah, it's uh, if you're at social, I mean, it's definitely the way to go. So uh, first thing in the morning, um, the transit, um, the uh, support crew, you'll wake up and you'll go right. So you don't come down to the beach to the start. You go right to the first transition. Wait for your competitors. There'll be coffee there. You get all your stuff together uh, for the uh, for your competitor. Their running shoes and their bag and most important thing is you want to be there, be there and be available for uh, your athlete when they arrive. If you're a competitor, you'll turn left, go down to the beach. Um, on your bike. On, on your bike. bike. Yeah. You bike down to the stand. And you need all the lights and everything because it's dark. Good point. Mm. Got to have those and reflectors and things like that. Compulsory. Compulsory. Mm. Yeah, because it was an accident one year, wasn't it? A yeah. couple, actually. People have yeah. been wiped out by cars coming around. There's someone who's putting your bike in the rack. Yeah. And pretty serious injury, actually. So you need to be awake. Yeah, I think he I'm not sure. No, 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 he didn't. No. Didn't die, but a really bad injury. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so you go to, uh, you go down, park your bike, go down to the beach, and wait for Juddy to release you. So um. Now, because as you you put your bike and you want to get there early, don't leave it to the last minute like I did one year. My goodness, it was dang, it was <laughs> bad. So you want to get there early, park your bike, get it all set up, um, and ha you know, happy. And what I do, um. Actually, it's not so important for the two-day race because it's actually daylight by the time you get there. So yeah. you want to make your bike reasonably distinctive. You might want to have a certain colour thing, tapes on the handlebars or something like that that you recognise. And then use that walk down to the beach as a bit of a warm-up. So you start walking, and then I start jogging uh, after five minutes yeah. and just to get a bit, a bit of blood flowing and, and start to warm up and get my legs ready for this. And then yeah. as I get closer down there, I do a couple of little sprints like the length of the lamppost sort of thing just to get my body used to the, or my lungs used to the idea yeah. that I'll be puffing really hard once the race starts. Yeah. And so when the, when, when the race actually starts, when Juddy releases people and they run up the road, yeah. you know, um, what's kind of, you know, what is going to help the first timer the most? You know I mean? Should they run hard? Should they hold back? What it's do you a good reckon? question. Now, um, the top athletes or the people who have you know, been training quite hard, they want to get into a good cycle bunch. Now, that first bike ride, um, you've got uh, it's three kilometres run off the beach before you get to your bike rack. Yeah. And then, then the first bike ride is two hours in bunches. And that's one thing I'd recommend you do. A lot of training over summer is ride in bunches. Get used to being in close proximity with people, being able to communicate with the riders around you to coordinate which way you're going to rotate and how you're going to draft. Because it can be quite intimidating for some Very intimidating time. if yeah. you haven't ridden a bunch. You think, oh, man, you're really scared. You end up dropping off the back of a bunch. There's a lot of work riding on your own. And, 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 you, know, yeah. uh, you can save 40% you know, energy by saving that wind drag if you're riding in a bunch. So practice. Yeah. And the good thing is for the first, uh, the first sort of six or seven Ks of the space coast to coast, um, it's, it's quite flat and, you know, there's a bit of a sort of settling in period. And then you come through the township of Kamara. Yeah, should should we go back a wee bit? You are, your original question was, what's it like <laughs> when you start off the beach? And, and so people want to – so where I was going with that bunch thing was yeah. that people want to sprint to get – up to the uh, bikes so they can get in with a good bunch. Yeah. And that's kind of counterproductive because if, if you're not a good rider, you don't want to get in with a fast bunch, but you won't be able to hang on. So you want to kind of seed yourself and notice, right, if I'm a really good rider or, or if I'm just 
you know, or, or instead I'm just social. You want to sort of seed yourself so you're not running too fast. Because if you run too fast at that first thing, you really exhaust yourself and you never get in the fast bunch anyway. So it's yeah. just a bit about planning and expect that some of the runners are going to go a bit hard. Yeah, and, so and that, get used to that. You know? That's a good point. And the and the two races that I did best was when I just decided to cruise up from mm, the beach mm, and just and run easy, and mm. it does leave you with a bit more energy for that bike. You can so, you can you blow you can blow yourself up by running too fast there. Yeah, and I've done you, that. And, yeah, <laughs> no. And then some riders, you know, you'll find in the bunch sometimes. Okay, let's say we've done the the, the run up the beach. Yeah. Actually, on that note, sorry, I think it's probably a good idea to do a few uh, three-kilometre um, time trials in the weeks leading up to the race just to see how you are and get used to that pace. To know what speed you're Yeah, you're to know run. what it feels like to run fast for three kilometres. Okay, let's drag us back on track. We're on the bike right now. We've passed through the, the township of Kamara. Yeah. You come to those, you know, those kind of downhills, uh, yeah. sort of six... Maybe, maybe is it three or four k's of downhill? Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely long downhill through native bush. Yeah. yeah. On the so, road. Special part of the race. And then you kind of, you keep going and you, you'll you come to the uh, little uh, sort of township of Jackson's. And then, you know, you've got about 12 k's to go uh, on the bike ride. A little bit more uh, undulating that last bit. Then you cross a railway line and then you come into... Yeah, look out for trains. Watch out for trains. <laughs> yeah, important safety tip. Then you come to that first transition. And what is it, Steve? It's chaos. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, now, yeah, now, we, you know, Juddy and the team have done a lot to improve the first transition. It used to be absolute chaos, and there'd be people can't find their support crews, they're like lost sheep looking for their, I mean, lambs looking for their mum. But now what, what's happened is, it's quite, this is what we call the bull ring. And this is quite well detailed in the um, the handbook, so don't panic too much. But the bull ring, and it's all lined out where your support crew have to be according to which number you are. Yeah. And you have to leave your bike at the gate sort of thing and then run through there and, and find your support crew. And it's quite well organized now, but just be prepared. It's quite fast and ferocious. And you're sort of a bit of a panic. Where are they and where are they? So I always used to tell my support crew to be at the end so that I would always know where they were. Um, did you, you know, what were your instructions for your support crew? Because you would generally be right up the front, yep. and I was often down the back. <laughs> it's uh, easy to find my crew from <laughs> so right there, if you're first off the bunch. But it, I think it's the key in the transition is to just relax. And um, I get my crew to wear a funny hat or something that's really noticeable. Yeah, noticeable. so it sticks out. And, and then I practice and practice and practice before the race how I'm going to do this transition quickly and, and you know, like, how are you going to take your bib off, put your pack on, that sort of stuff. So practice it. And yeah. then um, keep calm and then and head off into the mountain. Okay. So you're on to the mountain run. Now, uh, just a mention for support crew here, this is a, this is a really good time to feed your uh, competitor, to make sure that they get some to eat. And then as soon as they've gone, collect their bike, collect all Could their I, belongings. No, I disagree, actually. You reckon? Sorry. I, I don't want to stop in the transition and eat. Um, because that's time wasted. I'd rather yeah, have... Yeah, but you're at the front. I'm... For, any, <laughs> for anyone who wants to do well, yes, we, we do want work. to get through there quickly. No, you're so, right. So, I, I mean, you could have, you make up your own mind. You know, he, yeah. we all have different ways of racing. But Good I point. believe on the cycle while I'm moving, I want to be eating then. And it's important to actually, yes, yeah. if you're doing the one-day event especially, you need to set yourself up early in the day with good hydration. Because if you get dehydrated on the bike or yeah. a bit hungry on the bike, you're going to pay for it later in the kayak. Yeah. And it's the same with the two-day race. If you dehydrate a wee bit on day one, you're going to pay for it on day two. Yeah. So I recommend having at least a, a big bit on, on your bike that you drink all of it, you know? Yeah, you no, don't feel, you don't feel like it in the, in the early morning, but you've got to get a bit of it down you. And, and not just at the end of the bike, because you'll have a full stomach and you get a stitch on the run. You want to yeah. start sipping the, right from the very start of the bike. You yeah, know, that's good advice. I think uh, the Spates Coast to Coast is definitely a thinking man's race mm. and women's race. Um, and if and if you're thinking and you're doing those things in advance, you know you're gonna uh, you're gonna do better down the track. Okay, Steve. So, so we were yeah. You think it's a good time to feed, but I disagree. Move yeah. on to the mountain run. And the mountain run. Uh, here's a common question. Um, yeah. I'll preempt this. Uh, a lot of guys will say, "Oh, should I carry a camelback of water over the run?" And I say, "If you carry a camelback of water over the run, you need your head red because it's exactly. a, it's one of the beautiful things about the space coast to coast. We're going over this pristine, up to this, these pristine creeks and that beautiful, clear mountain water, and just oh, it's just so nice to drink. Um, so you don't need to carry any water. What you do need to carry is some sort of nutrition to keep you up, uh, keep your energy going through there. And I personally like lip and squeezies. I just have one of those sachets every half an hour and I time it with every creek crossing. I have a little bottle yeah. on a bungee cord, and, <laughs> and I have a squeezy, and then follow it with water. Yeah, I tried that once. I tried. I read that you took a squeezy every twenty minutes, and uh, 25, one, 25, 25, 27 actually. One year I actually tried that, and uh, and I felt quite ill. So it's important for you to know that 
it doesn't suit uh, every person. And I, you know, Steve Burns probably a bit more energy than me. He's going a bit quicker. And uh, when I tried to follow his race plan instead of my own, I, yeah, you know, I made yeah, a mistake. Yeah, yeah. So practice yeah. these in the long training session. So find out which food suits you. Go and buy a whole lot of different ones. Yeah. I mean, I like the squeezy because you can buy lemon ones because you can buy lots of flavors. You know, I'd never get bored. Yeah. Um. So, um, what was I going to say? On can that we one? get back to the course? We are We've got to get back to the course. Okay. Oh, okay. So we're on the run. So yeah. you cross the Otero River, the the dubious thrill of crossing the Otero River, which can be anywhere from ankle deep to up to your neck. Uh, have you ever swam across it? Uh, yeah, I dived in one year and swam across it. Um, <laughs> it's <there's>, cold. <laughs> quite bracing. But um, there's there's recommended crossings. You follow the flags. But if you get there, um, as you're driving over, you can go and suss out. Uh, a good crossing for you the night, the day before. So yeah. don't drink the Otero River. That could be polluted, but you can drink all the other ones. And, and drink straight away after the Otero, the next river crossing. Keep on drinking a little bit every every crossing. Yeah. So it's probably about an hour and a half uh, of sort of basic river flats. You cross the river a few times, right, until you come to a place called Doreen Creek. Uh, you won't know what uh, where Doreen Creek is until you run into the media because that's where they usually all are. That's where the helicopter photos. is, the, yeah. uh, marking tape. You can't go wrong on the race day. They've marked it off. So, so then you're into the bush, hey, Steve. And, uh, There's a little bush track you've seen up until you, I've briefly. Seen, I've seen you uh, on videos running up those sort of sections. I'm strictly a power walker in that part of the, uh, mm. in that part of the bush with the, with the roots and stuff. Another quite beautiful part. Um, yeah. Would tramping be good preparation for something like oh, that? You know? Yeah, if, if you're in, in another part of the country, tramping on rough Trails is really good preparation for proprioception, ankle strength, and foot-eye coordination. So hiking with a pack on is really good strength thing, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we've got a little question here. Speaking of mountain running, hmm. okay, so here's the question for the Spates West Coaster off-road run uh, for competitors. Hmm. So what is the name, what is the Maori name of the beach where the race starts? So what is the Maori name of the uh, beach where the race starts? And I don't even know that. Well... Neither do I. It's Serpentine Beach is, is the English. Don't say anything. That's no. not Maori. No. no, I think it's Bethel's Beach. That, that's it? not a Maori word, is no. it? No. no. Anyway. So if you that's know the answer, and we clearly don't, um, <laughs> then send the answer to uh, email it to Susan B. <coughs> at Susan B. at totalsport.co.nz. So that's Susan B. at totalsport.co.nz. And... Um, I'm sure there's a significant prize, which I mm. haven't been told about. Hey, there's some good questions coming up here. We'll, we'll answer those soon. Should we read a couple now? Oh, okay. I, I did see one that was quite interesting before. Um, do you wear your helmet on the three-kilometre run or leave it at the transition? No, you have to start the race with your helmet on, definitely. Steve, are you still in training? I was training for the human race, yep. Yeah, no, I trained for adventures, yep. Uh, there was one before. Uh, oh. Look out for trains, yeah, that's right. I don't like that sort of training when you hit trains. Um, do you have to do the two-day event before the one-day event? It's, it used to be the case, but no, you don't have to now. Yeah. Although it's probably a good idea. It's a it? really good idea. Ideal progression is to be support crew, so you get a feeling for it. Then do the two-day team, then do the two-day individual, then the one-day individual. That that's four race, you know, four events. But you can jump to whichever level you feel comfortable with. Some of us aren't that good at being support crew, though. Have you? I mean, I I've done know, twelve I've races. Have you great. ever been support crew? Um, I I've, have been support I've crew. Never. I'm really bad at it because yeah. I'm so impatient. I want to go and do it, but. But yeah, I, I, I have a lot of friends who have said they want to do the race and they, and, and they think it's a really good idea and they found it a great idea to support crew first. Yeah. They get the whole idea of what it's about and they go really well the next year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we should keep, we should keep on with the course because yeah. yeah. I guess that's what we're supposed to be telling people about. So the next part of the course is you get to Goat Pass. Uh, it's a, uh, a nice little hill there. Mm. Uh, and then it's all downhill from there, about 13 k's. Except uh, for Dudley's Knob. Oh, Dudley's Knob. You go down yeah. off Goat Pass and there's a wee bloop up to Dudley's Knob. And you get, then you get a fantastic view yeah. of um, down into the Minga and the, and the main highway. So it's, yeah. it's really cool. So you can see the finish line and that really spurs you on. One year, um, Juddy had a big kind of styrofoam containers full of ice up there when it was really hot. Really? Yeah. Um, I, I don't actually, people hiding cans of coke up there, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that's allowed actually. But, um, <laughs> it's not a good idea. <laughs> one year I wanted to go and hang some bananas and trees and, and put a great um, an ape suit on. But I, can I point that that if it is too hot, perfectly brilliant idea to jump into the river as you're going down. The the, the Minga yeah. River is lovely. There's some big pools in there, and I, I really love that sometimes. Just got to watch for cramps, and I'd suggest you train for that when you're doing your long hot sessions over the summer. Uh, practice going near some swing pool or a beach or something and just dunk yourself and see how it feels yeah and get used to that because there are some river crossings uh that are sort of 
tidy. It yeah. can be, yeah, it can be a bit of a shock to the system, but it's so invigorating. Oh, it's okay, so I'm carrying on. The, the last seven k's of the run is back out on the river flats, and you're running on stones and things like that. So if you've got any energy left uh, and you want to, you know, be competitive, then that's a good time to uh, to put a bit of effort in. So could I suggest something there? You're quite tired please? by then, and um, this is about training, preparing for that long, you know, for the winners it's even three hours, but for some people it's five, six, seven, eight hours, and you get quite fatigued by the time you get to the, the minga, the end of the run, Yes. and often people get really tired and cramping, even I get cramps there, and the way to get around that is to train, uh, here's a rule, do not ever train any more on roads or flat surfaces, you always run on grass, trails, bush, beaches, uh, rocks, so you're getting your, your muscles used to that sort of what we call proprioception, you know, the ankle strengthening stuff. When you run on roads, you just get using the big, uh, big muscle groups, and you don't get that preparation for a rough ground. So you should be a multi-sport coach. Eh? <laughs> you know this stuff. Okay, so uh, eventually, with any luck, you'll make it to Klondike Corner. Now, if you're doing the two day, that means you'll be finished for the day. You can have a massage, mm. have something to drink, mm. eat, uh, recover. Uh, support crew, this is your time to shine. You need to support your athlete. Uh, look after them as best you can. Get them off their feet, get them sitting down, getting them relaxed, rehydrated. And then in the one day, though, it's completely different. You because keep on you're trucking through. You're there for, what, 30 seconds if you're lucky? Oh, well, not even that. I, don't, I never stop there. I just have my support crew so well trained that I'm just straight onto the bike and gone. And, and the media often miss me. Hey, can I just point out, if you're doing the two-day event, camp at Klondike Corner. It's a great big social oh, event. Yeah. And you learn lots of stuff that you go and see how other people do it. And you have great yeah. stories. People are sitting around at the barbecue, you know, <laughs> eating your you know, cream rice or whatever you're eating and sharing war stories. And it's a really cool place. You may feel like a spate if you're a competitor, but <laughs> don't have one. No, you save it for no, the next no. day. It's got to be earned. Okay, so um, first thing in the morning uh, for the two-day people, um, the uh, support crew, you'll be leaving at 5 a.m. and you'll be going down to the river. You leave uh, your athlete behind. Yeah, you leave them. You've got to go ahead of them and you've got to set up for the transition there. Uh, they'll be coming through uh, around, they start at 7.30 and they leave in groups of 10 so that they don't all arrive at the river at the same time. That's yeah. bad. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the point. Um, when you leave your athlete, it's quite cool in the morning still, and you'll want to think about what sort of warm-up clothing they can have there. Good point. Um, that they can then discard. Um, I think there's – I forget how – if you've got warm-up clothing you don't want, I think is there some way you can get it picked up. I think there is, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, no. I mean, I've always just kind of worn a little jacket or something like and that. And shove it in your pocket. That's yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, good strategy. A small disposable yeah. – not disposable, packable jacket that you can put yeah. in your pocket. Yeah. Good point, yeah. So that rides – a beanie, you know. Oh, good idea. A beanie yeah. is a really good thing to. Um, yeah. Uh, Those little kind of things yeah. that go under your. Icebra helmet. Icebreaker is selling them nowadays, um, <laughs> uh, but no, because that's the most useful form of warmth per weight yeah. anyway we should move on yeah. so then you so bike up on, in groups of 10 that, yeah and you've got those kind of for the first couple of k's you'll think you're a legendary cyclist but forget it it's just downhill sometimes there's a tailwind there too <laughs> on the one day yeah. event there's a, a, a lovely little norwest in fact most times there is it and you yeah. can home on there like yeah. yeah i remember getting up to like 60 kilometers an hour at one stage you just well, hang in your car <laughs> on my bike man oh, now, I had a crash uh, actually on that leg so you know if you you got to be careful way eh? you know there was uh, groups of 10 and they're flying along you just need to concentrate it. Um, you know I was right down the back of the group and I was very lucky to, uh, not to get messed up and wreck my bike but uh, so just be careful on that little bike ride it can get quick and you can get excited and it's all happening and once again trainers bunches for that you know? yeah um, there's no substitute for it Okay, so Steve, you come to the end of that little 15 You have to leave your bike. bike up the top and you have to run down a gravel road for about a kilometre or maybe two kilometres. That's right. You, and so you, you have can't to think, bike down that road, can no, you? No, you have bike. to leave your bike up the top. You, and, you wanted to do that, though, didn't oh, you? Oh, no, you don't have to leave your bike. You carry your bike, don't you? Oh, no, you, yeah, you push it down. You carry your bike, push it down. You and used to dump it, but now you now you yeah. Yes, the rules keep changing. But now the current rules are you run your bike down the road, you're not allowed to ride it. So you want to think what shoes you're going to use there. So often I change pedals. And sometimes people wear mountain bike shoes that clip yeah. into their uh, things so they can run down the road in the mountain bike shoes. And it's a bit of, you know. That works well, actually. It I does, mean, yeah. The last couple of years I've uh, run down in my cycling shoes, and it's it's not that comfortable. But, you know, if you practice it a little bit, you you, you do get used to it. Another and, one um, is to bike in your running shoes. So you can, yeah. oh, sorry, bike in your running shoes what you wear in the kayak if you've got yeah. small enough feet. So that's a double. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. saves two changes, you see. So there's yeah. a, lot, a lot of tactics here. It's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so we're down onto the bridge. We're getting ready to uh, to meet up with our support crew. We cross the bridge. Hopefully, one of you uh, support crew will be waiting there to take the bike. Um, and um, 
And then I guess the competitor runs down. Now, this is where I always recruit help, you know. There's always people standing around. I never have enough. Yeah, there's a lot of camaraderie there. And you can yeah. ask others for help, that's right. Because yeah. you want to be calm and, and yeah. relaxed when yeah. you're getting in your yeah. boat. And, yeah. and mm. uh, you know, it's an important mm. important thing. Mm. Okay, so um, what else do we talk about? Okay, so in, in, <laughs> can I just go back a little bit? Yeah, yeah. That middle yeah. bike leg, if you're doing the longest day race, the one-day race, that's, that's where I fuel up. I have a, a bum bag full of nice, yummy food, and I clip it on, and that's where, I'm, as I'm riding, I'm, I'm feeding myself so I'm not stopped. Um, so down to the kayak, done the run thing we talked about, and you want to practice this with your support on the grass at home, you know, how you can quickly get into the boat, and who yeah. does what, and, and where's the paddle going to be, and which way around it, and how, how you're going to spray skirt on. So you practice it with a stopwatch, and yeah. develop a quick technique into the boat, and you shoot, you head off. Now I like to start the kayak slowly because um, I think you know, it's really important. Yeah, actually. warm into it, so you don't end up cramping. And your legs, if you've been doing the one day race, and your legs have been moving, running. They're quite fatigued, and they tend to cramp a little bit if you yeah. if you go if you go too fast. So warm into the race, take twenty minutes to warm up, and it's a long way, and you want to have yeah. fun as well. So, so um, we, we're talking for uh, your average athlete, probably sort of four to five hours, depending on the river flow. Mm. Uh, probably for the first hour and a half, that's going to be open braided rivers. Open braided river, the sort of thing you might see in the Hawke's Bay, uh, sort of shallow and in and out uh, the gravels. Um, after about half an hour will be the first test for you, and that's the rock garden. It's a series of three or four sort of drops, rapids, yeah. aren't they? They're not it's, too tricky. It's not too bad, uh, but what, what you've got is like a pinball thing. You know, got rocks here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. You have to sort of zigzag your way through them. And a lot of people actually, there's no problem, but they, they, they fall out because they're so nervous. And think, oh, that's right. And so I'd recommend you just you feel quite you just be relaxed about that. So do you have it like I, I used to have a mantra when I'd come to a rapid where I felt a little uncomfortable or something like that. I'd I'd sort of I'd say lean forward, keep paddling, try to relax and, and breathe deeply. Yeah, and make decisions early. I always try to make decisions now, early. that's a good point. Same with any of the sports in the coast to coast, and um, particularly Spates the kayak. coast to coast. Space coast to coast. <laughs> Um, the sports coast goes in space. Um, you want to plan ahead. But the further ahead you look, the faster you're going to go. So I'm always looking two or three kilometres down the river if I can. Really? Yeah, seriously. Well, you know what's coming look, up. Well, because I'm, I'm looking for where the deepest water is, the blue water, basically. Yeah, two or looking, three hundred metres. They're not kilometres, right? Not kilometres, yeah. Well, as far ahead as you can look. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. you know, and that, I mean, I'm planning out there, and yeah. then I'm looking at in the next hundred metres. Yeah. But it's the same with any sport. The further ahead you look, the faster you go. Exactly. And the thing with the river, Coast to Coast River, for those who haven't seen it, it's quite a unique braided river. There's only a few in the world. And braids, well, let me tell you, how, it's basically the first third of the race is braids, then it's it goes right. into the gorge. For about two, it's about two hours for the gorge, isn't it? Yeah, Do you want I'm to describe the gorge, you know, in terms of... Well, let me finish this first. Sorry. So, a third. So there's basically, there's a third of braids, a third of gorge, followed by another third of braids again. Yeah. So getting linked into practice braids is really important. Now we haven't got time to cover that. Now maybe in another session. Yeah. But I've got I've got six rules about Gurney's braided you know choices and how to make sure you don't run aground. Actually, that's a really that would be really useful. I could have done with that ten years ago. Yeah. Actually. Okay. <laughs> and so I, do, I cover these in my workshop on Saturday in Auckland if you want to come. But um, what am I doing on Saturday? Uh, so the river is it's about looking ahead to figure out where the braids go and where they're going to join up again. And there's these rules to apply. You basically the challenge is to stay in the deepest water. And we, so Kelly talked about the, the rock garden. It's not that bad. People are going, oh, they get all scared yeah. by it. But it's actually not that bad. It's, it's plenty fine. Yeah. Uh, plenty enough water there. And then, so there's the, the hour and a half in the braids. Then there's the gorge, which is kind of different rapids again. And then uh, braids again to the finish. So the thing with the the, um, co the kayaking is you want to keep on drinking yeah. and eating. And that's kind of hard when you're distracted with the paddle. So you have to be disciplined to, to yeah. keep the food coming in. Okay. I and think we should answer a couple more questions, Steve. Let's have a look at the old list there. Hmm. Uh, see anything that uh, that grabs you? How if you get injured on the mountain run? How do you get out? Hobble is right. Yes. Um, if you, if you, you know Chief Goodwin, uh, oh, he won the um, the veterans once. Yeah. I saw him with a massive cut yeah. on his knee once, and he oh. just walked out. What a yeah. legend! You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so mountain run. If you if it's life threatening, of course you get helicoptered out. But that's you don't want to go there. It's not going to happen. So um, I, I I sprained my ankle quite badly about an hour ago, and I still managed to win the race with that. So you just have to. Prevention is better than cure. Instead of thinking sprained ankles, think strong ankles, that yeah. sort of stuff. Okay, um, how many metres do you climb over what distance on the run? Oh, geez, so, I don't know. It's uphill and then it's downhill. Okay, yeah, go okay. past is about yeah. 11, 1,200. Look on a map and you'll find that. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer. Sorry, because no. <laughs> I don't know where you start. Um, yeah. Any recommendations for similar rivers to train on around the Waikato area? Um, 
Uh, I don't know the rivers around here, to be honest. Well, the, the braided rivers tend to be more on the east coast, don't yeah. they? I mean, well, the braided rivers are hard to find up that way. The yeah. one thing that Waikato River does have that the gorge has on the coast to coast course is boils and stuff. So yeah. I get on. Um, I was just up in the Waikato this weekend, did a week training session for some um, paddlers, and they found there's some quite good bits in Cambridge and that sort of area where there's lots of boils and fast sort of moving water coming sideways at you. Yeah. So that's a good thing. And get in the white water kayaks down on Rangitiki, Rangitaiki, all those areas down down south of, of you know middle of North Island. Um, get it, you can never learn uh, do too much paddling on little gnarly white water boats, you know, that's really good practice for the, way, uh, for the coast to coast. Somebody wants to know how you avoid getting lost on the run. You can't. You, it's all taped off on race day. Yeah. Training, you need to take a map through if you haven't been through before, or go yeah. with someone who has, but race day, you can't get lost. Actually, that's a, just going back to that, it's a really good point just to follow people on the run. Well, <laughs> only if they know where they're going. Because yeah. oh, that was a, was a great energy saver for me, was to follow, yeah. uh, you know, somebody else's step, yeah, step yeah. where they step. And, right. and people used to hang around and wait, for you, to, because I know, you knew the I knew, track. <laughs> I knew one young kid, there's Russell friends, myself, John Jacoby, and... They don't like the, and there was, a, there was a South African guy, Brooklyn Montgomery, and he wanted yeah. to follow us, and so we stood around and tied up our shoelaces and pretended we needed to go for a piss. We're waiting for him to go, so he wouldn't follow us. Actually, um, <laughs> Mike Causa did that once. He, yeah, he yeah. let uh, Jonathan Wyatt go in front, you know, yeah. the world mountain running yeah. champ, and then, uh, and then uh, he sort of followed went, him, yeah. went past him and... The away. other thing on that, though, I mean, yes, it's useful to follow someone who knows the course. Yeah. But you, how do you find out if they know the course? I guess you chat to them and you can tell if they look like they know where they're going. Yeah. But... You also want to be able to run the race at your own pace. You can't bake a cake to someone else's recipe. You know, it won't work. So I've often let Keith Murray and those guys go on the mountain run because I know if I follow them, I'll blow up. Yeah, and no, I just, yeah it's, and, hard to, it's hard to judge. And you're so that. excited, you want to go. But if, okay. you, if you go too hard on the mountain run, you, you, you need to ease into it. Okay, so let's, um, let's one more question. Um, guys, there's all these train jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my court hearing tomorrow, okay? Um. Okay, well, let's move on to uh, the river. So uh, we'll carry on to the river, and then we'll yeah. look for some more questions. So, okay, so now we, we're at the end of the gorge, a couple of hours, and we get to Woodstock, and that's yeah. where there'll be a few people. Uh, some of the support boats will start from there. Yeah. It's about, what, 45 minutes, and you've got those power lines at the end. Yeah, there's, focus there's on. a halfway rock. You know, it's very obviously a half, halfway rock. Oh, know, yeah, I know the one. From Woodstock, yeah. and there's this rock on the left that's sort of standing on its own, and then the river shoots over, over to the right, just yeah. some willow trees sometimes. So that's halfway rock, and it's, yeah. And then you can see those power lines. You can see end. the power lines, yeah, and yeah. it's so cool because you know you're nearly there. Oh, and the power lines are on top of this little hill when they go across the gorge. Yeah. And, you know, and then you start to dig in a bit harder, and you know you just want to leave everything out on the river so you get to the end of the kayak finished, you know. Try not to fall out at that uh, last little corner. It doesn't look good, eh? Well, stay dry. Yeah, stay, yeah, stay dry. Put the right picture in your head, man. Yes. Stay upright. So, yeah. Positive reinforcement. <laughs> That's right. They're, they're occasionally, people do fall out on the last bluff, yeah. so you want to avoid that. Um, okay, so we're, we're now at uh, the, the transition. And you'll so, expect your legs to be dead. So get your support yeah. crew to give you a hand out, and you'll feel a little wobbly, but that's normal. Yeah, and so up the little hill <coughs> there uh, to, the, to the bike stand. And once again, uh, practice your transitions at home on the grass. See what's the quickest way to do this. Support, Change shoes. Support crew, good idea to cover the uh, bike, especially if it's hot, because uh, I've been nice, up there yeah. and heard a few... Uh, Punches go. It hasn't happened to me yet, but uh, sometimes the sun on the tires makes the pressure too much and they pop. So engineer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's nice. Don't explain though. it. No, it's very good point. Yeah. Very good point. Um, by okay. now, sometimes people are starting to really cramp and hurt. And um, one important thing, actually, I just come out of this yeah, is on. water bottles. I, I like to keep my drink separate from my food. You know, so I don't like to have pre-mixed drinks because if it's a hot day, yeah, it's going to be too concentrated and you get cramps. So I have water. And I have food, you know, like squeezies. And in the water, it's good to put a pinch of salt per litre yeah. to help prevent cramps, and it helps the water digest quick or you know transfer yeah. quicker. So that's one thing that you're really looking forward yeah. to on this on this last bike leg because it's usually pretty hot. With, with Raro, which is uh, mm. is quite good. You mm. know, just like the taste mm. of Raro. Okay, so you're on the last bike ride. You've only got 70 k's to go to Christchurch. Important little safety tip here: when you get to the um, when you get to the edge of the city, you've still got 25 k's to go. A lot of people get quite excited there, and the pace always sort of picks up, but it's still, uh, you know, it's quite energising going through the city. People are driving mm -hmm. and they're beeping. If you're Steve Gurney, you're getting people coming up beside you and go, yeah, because he's going to win it. Well, well no matter who you are, the closest people are really friendly. They in are. fact, often the roads are jams. You know, it's, it's only the Santa Parade and Coast to Coast that jams the roads. 
And Jenny's really proud of that because he got called into the police office and said, look, we've got a problem. You jam, you gridlock the roads. He loved it. Um, so um, people are out there cheering with their pot lids and they're listening to the radio and some of them have got hoses. Yeah. And it's really cool, actually, and absorb their energy. You know, when they want you to go well. So smile yeah. at them. Smile at this. You know, I know it's hard because you're tired. Yeah. But smile at these spectators. And they'll give you a big cheer back, and it's really boosts you. And so it is a great, it's yeah. a great feeling, eh? Hey? It's, yeah. it's it's yeah. one of the great feelings of the yeah. coast to coast is coming into the city, and um, you know, use the people around you because uh, in the um, in the two day you'll be in in bunches, uh, and if you work together, you'll get to town an awful lot quicker uh, yeah, than yeah, if you yeah. uh, you know. So you might have to work a little harder to stay with a bunch at a particular time. In the one day, though, you know, you can still feed off other people. You know, if there's someone just in front. I mean, wasn't there a case a couple of years ago when, um, was it Emily Miazga caught someone? Yes. Right in the last... Yes, kind of, oh, it happens every, or oh, not every, every second or third year. There's some dramatic changeover in the league. Yeah, as you, you, got, uh, you got Richard Usher. Oh, uh, yeah, I got Richard Usher. I could see, he was so disappointed. <laughs> yeah. It was, it was like five kilometres from the finish and I passed him. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah. Can I, I'll just Definitely. capitalise on something you pointed out. If you're in the two-day race, you're allowed to draft here. Yes. And I think it's important to do that. And sometimes you might see someone ahead and you just can't catch them. It's sometimes um, tactful to look behind and see if there's someone's just a, you know, a few hundred metres back, you might want to wait for them or slow down at least. And when you, they join up, it's all about communication. You know, I know you don't feel like talking at this stage of the race, but it's important to communicate with people and say, look, let's work together for as long as we can. Yeah. And you realise some people at different stages, they can't contribute as much to the bunch and they have to take every second lap out. But it's still going to be faster for everybody, if you think about that. You know, it's a bit of a, a bit of a saving yeah. for everybody. And how can I do my bit and still last the two hours to, to some of the beach? And it's worth, worth having good communication skills and practicing that in training. Yeah, I think that's a really important point because I've been a number of bunches where there's some really quick guys and there's a, there's a bunch of other people. And, you know, it can be like one of the most powerful experiences you'll have in the race you know, mm -hmm. uh, is actually kind of working together with other people of mm -hmm. different abilities, mm -hmm. you know, to see each mm -hmm. other through to the finish. I mean, in the last K, you can all take off if you want to, but yeah, that's right. it's, it's yeah. always fun. Okay, so... Um, getting to the finish line. Getting to the finish line. Now, yeah, yeah it's getting stronger and stronger headwind usually too. There's yeah. always a headwind, not always, but most times the headwind is an easterly sea breeze. And so you've got to expect that as you get closer to the coast, it's going to be harder. So even more reason to ride as a bunch. If you're on your own, we'll just expect it and, and allow for that in terms of energy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Should we answer a few more questions before we finish up? Oh, the, yeah, that's a tease, isn't it? <laughs> I know. We've, we've really got okay. it. Because yeah. I want to stay with uh, one point that uh, that I read in your book, which I think uh, people will find really, really handy. So we've got to finish on the seven yeah. Ps. Let's have a look at some of the questions here. Has the earthquake affected the what bike you need? No. Uh, the rose has got a little more interesting, but it's actually there's – I've ridden through there a lot. It's a bit bumpier, but – uh, it's largely all repaired now. It's just a few lumps here and there, and you won't affect your speed at all. You won't need a mountain bike. Nut. Don't even need to change your tyres. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be fine, okay? Well, you might think that you're in the port of Sumner, but you're not. But, you know, <laughs> it's all those, uh, there's so many uh, containers. Uh, 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 oh, yes. You're, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> it's not the port of Sumner. It's still Sumner. It's a good suburb, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, as hopefully uh, maybe some of those will be gone, but uh, I kind of doubt it by no, memory. I think, I think these containers are there to stop the rock falls, so it's actually yeah. quite safe. Uh, you won't need any different bike. The road's just a bit lumpy. Um, oh, I can't see any other questions. Now, I want to no. finish with these seven Ps because I, I think they're really, really crucial. And this is uh, one of Steve's mantras, and I think it's uh, it's brilliant. So do you want to explain the seven Ps? Well, it's, it's, yeah, there's a bit more to it, but we haven't got time to do the whole story. I do the prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Just go over that slowly. Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. That's six Ps. Um, is that, I'd like to change it now, and I oh, can add another one in, but... I like to change it. Prior planning promotes pristine performance because you don't want to have the piss poor but it's, it's got the wrong picture. But, um, <laughs> so what that is, is when I send off my entry form, you know, it could be June or July, so now's the time to do it basically, you list off, I go on my computer, I list off all the things that might stop me from getting my goal, all the hurdles that are in the way that might have like support crew running out of petrol, um, puncture on the bike, putting a hole in my kayak, you know, I... I I write out how can I prevent that happening, and the best thing is prevention rather than solution. You know, you don't you don't want to you don't want the cure, you want the prevention. Yeah. So how can I prevent a hole in my kayak? Well, it's about getting more skills mm -hmm. and practicing in harder conditions. You know, and harder. So, rivers. so what you're saying is it's it's better to be prepared than yeah. to you know it's all, always good to be able to sort of be flexible and, and pick yeah, things up yeah, as they yeah, fall yeah. apart. But you yeah. can avoid that by being by, by being, being prepared. prepared. So I type this up. There's about four pages <clears> of computer notes on things that could go wrong. 
And then I think, you know, and so I don't want to focus on that. I just want to list them so I can prepare for them and focus more on the, the powerful stuff. And part of this planning, the six Ps, is writing out a plan for my support crew. You know, it starts the week before the race. Um, you know, what, what things do I need to pick up and organize an order from the shop and make sure I've got. Yeah. And, you know, like in booking my bike in for a uh, service and getting new tires on the bike and stuff like that and checking the rudder cables, you know. So it's a yeah. list of all the things I need to do the week beforehand. And then there's a list of, the, list of the timing. And then it's a list of what should be in each bag for each transition. So the support crew can read through this thing and say, oh, yeah, that's what you're yeah. in there. And the timing is when they need to be at this transition and when they need to meet me yeah. prior to the race and, and when they need to be at the sun on the beach and what I want after the race and what I want to do yeah. the next day and for the prize giving. You'll only need to do it once, really. Yeah, you? You know. it's, a, um, it's a cool plan, it's, but it's a yeah. time line and so we know we're not going to miss anything out and that gives you huge confidence it's actually it is good eh? i mean i used to lie on the bed and i just think through the whole race mm. and i'd have a little pen and paper and just yeah. go through little things yeah. and it would sort of just visualize the whole thing anyway we need to wrap up we've been going mm. for quite a while now so um thanks everyone for watching and we hope that you've enjoyed it um and if you've enjoyed tonight's uh, webcast, uh, please join me in two weeks on November the 29th. And your mates. Bring your mates. Bring, bring your mates as well. Yeah. Mm. Bring your mates with spades. It rhymes. Uh, for the 29th of November, which is my wife's birthday. She'll be 40. And, um, yeah, that uh, webinar will be on how to prepare for your spades coast to coast. Uh, running, biking, finding a mentor. Uh, probably won't be quite as long as this one. A big thank you to spades uh, who have been helping make this uh, possible. And uh, I want to uh, particularly thank our uh, uh, race legend and, uh, and our special guest tonight, Steve Gurney. Thanks, Kelly. Legend of the race. It's been great. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for um, all your wisdom and planning us too. It's good, isn't it? Lucky, aren't you lucky to have this? Great. It's all Tell good. Me. All right. Mm. Thanks for coming. Mm. We'll see you later. Cheers. If we can work out how to shut it down. Does Jenny make you drink three cans of the golden nectar at the finish line these days? <laughs> <laughs> and you're only allowed one. <laughs> then I don't drink it, I just spray it around. It's I a, that's a wrong thing. I don't make you drink it straight after he finished once. Did he, he, he fall over? Oh, he, was just, he oh. just went mental, eh? Oh. Oh. <laughs>